Mr. Devraj. After an introduction like that, I always feel like I should be singing or something, uh, which you don't want. Of course, I forgot to remember how to turn this off so I can turn mine on. Uh, political science, here we go. So, starting up this uh, slideshow from beginning. So, uh, I don't know how popular I am among a political scientists. Uh, I know I'm not very popular among some members of Congress, but because uh, they write me nasty letters. The, uh, I have a folder. The, uh, the issue uh, there is that you know, I'm not a big fan of term limits, and they are, so uh, I tend to you know, rebel in the wrong way. But I thought today we'd take a look at a tiny subject, uh, political science, politics, and artificial intelligence. Uh, and there's my title and all that stuff. Uh, just to give you a little context, Rausch is a German word. I, um, I have German descent. And uh, Rausch is actually the German word for drunk. No one ever remembers my last name, but they always remember Dr. Drunk. I never quite understood that. But anyway, so let's take a look here. Artificial intelligence. So imagine Will Rogers. I went to a graduate school at the University of Oklahoma. I'm a big fan of Will Rogers. Uh, if Congress had artificial intelligence, it might produce better laws than it does with real intelligence. Let that one sink in for a minute. That's an insult. Will Rogers is very good at that. Uh, what was his favorite? One of his famous lines was, uh, if I talk about Congress and I talk about the criminal class, oh, I repeat myself. Boy, you guys are tired after lunch. <laughs> so, if Congress had artificial intelligence, it might produce better laws than it does with real intelligence. So we're going to take a look at a couple of things. I tend to divide up politics and government as being different. Uh, infuriates definitely my 2306 students, the state and local government students, because they see politics and government as the same thing. And I hate it. Uh, I'm probably teach one of the few classes on campus, where, other than math, where people don't hate it before they actually even start it. I hate government. And I was like, okay, I kind of like it. Uh, my dad was a politician, never won anything. But, uh, but I'm going to take a look at AI and government. So there is a difference. That might be an interesting exercise. Ask something like uh, an, a bot like ChatGDP, what's the difference between government and politics? Surprisingly, yesterday when I was playing around with ChatGDP, I did not do that. I hadn't thought about that. I only made that suggestion. I didn't actually do it. So. And then we're going to take a look at AI and political science. So political science, in a sense, is a study of both politics and government. Uh, I have this argument with local and not so local community college folks who want us to call our classes you know, government 2306. And I always tell them, I teach bigger than government. I teach about politics and stuff. So uh, they don't quite get it most of the time. Most of them are history anyway, so it doesn't, uh, doesn't really impact them in any way. So just for some fun, I asked ChatGTP some things, and it produced something. And we'll take a look at those, hopefully. Uh, this morning when I tried to practice, uh, <laughs> ChatGTP was down. Uh, <laughs> it's funny. Uh, you're trying to do something on ChatGTP, and it's actually not working. So, so we're going to take a look at what's some of the differences between artificial intelligence and then real intelligence or reality intelligence. Well, most of you probably don't remember uh, Senator Joe Biden running for president in 1987. Those in your room who do remember Senator Joe Biden running, uh, it's a small group probably. In 1987, he ran for president. Uh, and he had a tiny little mistake that he made. And I, of course, am not getting my notes on here. I actually copied my notes. Uh, Neil Kinnock, at the time, was the Labor Party leader in, in Great Britain. And what happened was, in a 1987 debate, uh, candidate Biden, Senator Biden, uh, quoted Neil Kinnock without actually saying, that's something that Neil Kinnock would say. So he, he cited him without actually, you know, he quoted him without actually citing him. Where did I get that? So it made it sound like that was a Joe Biden statement, not a Neil Kinnock statement. And the media picked up on it. I thought it was very interesting. Now, I asked that question. Uh, I actually have my notes down here somewhere. So there was a, uh, an interesting uh, Maureen Dowd of the New York Times wrote that American, political, uh, American presidential campaign strategists admired the way it portrayed Kinnock as a man of character. And Senator Joseph Biden was really interested in this movie, so he became quite the Kinnock fan. Uh, the problem was... Uh, Kinnock, well, he made this, uh, there was this debate in Iowa. The first caucus in the presidential campaign is in Iowa, uh, traditionally has been in Iowa, 
And so they had a debate. Uh, does it say up here who the debate was? Oh, Michael Dukakis, Jesse Jackson, Al Gore, and others. And so uh, he basically just, in his regular prepared statement, mentioned Kinnock without actually mentioning his name. And so uh, after, the, after the debate, when uh, the, the presidential candidate sat down, uh, one of uh, Biden's aides told him, uh, Psst, you forgot to credit Kinnock. I won't say what he said. Uh, in his hurry, he had failed to squeeze in the usual accreditation. He had to drop out. What I was trying to find this morning, and I, I guess this is it, uh, the Dukakis campaign made sure the, camp, the media got to know about it. So that's a good question. Uh, let's say somebody today uh, actually runs a, uh, an ad that's created by artificial intelligence. So they call it misinformation. Aren't there lots of journalists out there, you know, rummaging around trying to find stories, dig them out and stuff? No, not really. Uh, uh, I've been working on this little research project looking at a uh, governmental structure created in the early 1970s. And just about every issue of the Canyon News has a long article about debates that went on in the, in the Randall County Commission, the Potter County Commissioner's Court, all those types of things. Today, if you open up the Canyon News, I know more about Lubbock in the Canyon News than I do about Canyon. Oh. Uh, which is why a lot of people ask, why do you still subscribe to the Canyon News? Because occasionally, like last week, there's a great article about all the debate of replacing Paul Blake on the Canyon School Board. Am I the only person interested in that stuff? Uh, maybe. So why does this matter? There was this great uh, story recently about how the DeSantis campaign faked some pictures of uh, Anthony Fauci. You might remember him as everyone's favorite doctor from the COVID year-ish. They showed pictures of him hugging Donald Trump. And why would DeSantis run these, these ads? Well, it makes Trump look bad. <laughs> He'd do pretty good by himself. Uh, oop, that's recorded. <laughs> I'll disappear next week probably, but anyway, who cares? Uh, there they are. That's all artificial intelligence. Oh, it, there's a bunch of them. We can run through all of them. There's one. There's one. There's another one. Now, what's interesting about this is uh, the three images of Trump and Fauci kissing and hugging are likely AI generated. Likely. <laughs> That's like saying, when it rains, I'll get wet. Uh, likely. It's likely I'll get wet if I'm outside when it rains. Likely. Uh, so... Uh, I thought that was particularly interesting. Uh, widely accessible artificial intelligence tools could fuel the rampant spread of disinformation and create other hazards to democracy. Those pictures of Trump and Fauci, who would believe that? Would any normal reading American believe that? You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> I bet I could pass it around campus and I get, well, that's what I've always thought. I thought they were both gay lovers. Not going there. But couldn't you also use AI then to find AI? Uh, we've actually been uh, looking at that in, as professors. You know, if a student uses AI to write a paper, can't we just feed it through AI to find where it is? Uh, in the good old days, last week, I, uh, I use Google. So if I'm reading a paper and there's something that doesn't really sound student-like, I take that sentence and I plug it into Google, and I find it. Uh, nine and a half times out of 10. So that one half a time, I just gave up and decided to go to bed. So, uh, there's actually a journalism program. I feel like I'm advertising everybody else's school here. This is at the, uh, I think it's the London School of Economics. London School of Economics and Political Science. They actually have a, a program called Journalism AI, which actually will teach journalists how to use AI for good, uh, both in ferreting out information when I was in high school, I always wanted to be like an investigative journalist. I grew up with uh, Woodward and Bernstein. I thought I was more Bernstein than I was Woodward. I can never dress like Woodward. Uh, he looks too much like Robert Redford. I don't know. I don't know why that is. Is that a really old <laughs> popular culture reference I just stopped using? So uh, in political science, we have this thing called model legislation. And model legislation isn't all that bad. Um, there are some groups out there that, that give you, 
you know, give members of the state legislature legislation. That's their job. They're lobbyists. And uh, in, in some cases, these bills look identical. So it could be introduced in Arkansas, Texas, uh, Colorado, probably not, but uh, Kansas maybe. And you see these bills and are all the same. And there's been a lot of criticism of that. So is that any worse than having the Texas legis legislature introduce a bill written by AI? Hmm. I should probably turn off my dingy phone. Uh, the one bill that sticks in my mind is this year, I don't, those of you who may not follow the Texas Constitution like I do, uh, we are voting on a constitutional right to farm. The, the Texas legislature has decided that we need to determine, put agricultural practices into the Constitution. And I think there's like four other states in the last 10 years that have voted on this. And I think ours is actually bigger because ours also includes uh, timber harvesting and something else. Timber harvesting and maybe, maybe it actually just says food production in there too. Uh, so things like uh, meatpacking plants and stuff. Uh, are there any family-run meatpacking plants? What do you think about that? Meatpacking plants tend to be big industrial type of things. You don't just have a, an outbuilding where you... When I grew up, we did, but... Oh, it's our little butcher house. One of the things I tried to do, and let me see if I can, I am not the most efficient or effective on switching screens here, but I'm going to switch back to my, did I do it on Bard? No, I think I did it on, whoops. Oh, chat GTP. Uh, thank you. So I did a, uh, a little study where I compared those two. Oklahoma actually voted on constitutional right to farm. Do, any of you are familiar with Oklahoma? Have you ever been to Oklahoma? It kind of looks like Texas, only a little bit further north. Uh, I went to graduate school at the University of Oklahoma, so I still do a lot of research on Oklahoma. Uh, they actually voted on a constitutional right to farm. Did it pass? Think about it for a minute. Did it pass? I wouldn't be asking you if it did, by the way. Uh, I'm showing my hand here. It failed in Oklahoma. So I spent the last two or three weeks digging up all sorts of data and stuff to try to figure out why it failed. Uh, by the way, it failed because of water. Uh, there's parts of Oklahoma that actually have water. That's what makes Oklahoma different than Texas. Uh, Oklahoma has some water, like lakes and stuff, Lake Dirty Bird in Norman. Uh, when I looked it up on ChatGTP, I wanted to compare it doesn't know anything because I'm using the cheap version. I'm, I'm not a, well, I guess I could have someone else pay for it, but I'm not a big fan of paying for stuff. So uh, they only looked up at stuff since September 2021, or not since, up to September 2021. So that's the nice thing about my classes. Uh, when I teach my classes, most of my assignments are more recent type of things, like go to a local government meeting. And you can't have it look up a local government meeting from this semester because it's this semester, 2023. So... Uh, I did that. I also did it on Bard, uh, and Bard was kind of funny. Bard's a uh, is Google's version, uh, Google Alphabet's version. Uh, Texas Proposition One, 2023, and Oklahoma State Question 777. Interesting. It thought these were marijuana legislation. I'm trying to remember. Marijuana, I think, was 820. Uh, state Question 820 in Oklahoma. You might remember to Oklahoma. Uh, in 2018, Oklahoma, 2018? Yes, 2018, Oklahoma uh, allowed for medical marijuana. So you, you know, if you get a doctor's note, you can actually smoke marijuana in Oklahoma. You can buy it. Uh, though that was very interesting that it thought those two were, and it even talked about, you know, Texas, limited possession of marijuana. Huh? Uh, so I, I actually did it backwards then. I gave it a little bit of help by asking well, what is state question 777 and then it's the, that talked about it correctly the measure was defeated by a vote of 60 to 40 and there's this one actually gives you a citation wikipedia don't you like when the web cites itself essentially uh wikipedia uh, oklahoma state question 777 are both right to farm amendments now i got it right since i told it what it was by having it look up what it was it actually got it right so this is very interesting uh, <laughs> And uh, so it looks like Texas is actually a little bit bigger. Uh, Texas has established a process for determining whether a state law has a compelling state interest. So, things I do with my free time. 
Actually, that's not really my free time. That's part of my research. Uh, in the process of preparing this, I found a thing called prompt engineering. There's actually a process. You can get a certificate in this. How to write the prompts to get the best stuff out of ChatGTP and BARD. Oh. Now, again, I did a chat search. Oh, what schools might be offering said certificates? Well, since 2021, uh, there's been a bunch that have added. Uh, UT Austin has a program. UT Dallas has a program. I don't think tech has a program. Uh, there's a bunch of Texas schools. Uh, Harvard, Yale uh, have programs on how to do, how to write those prompts, you know, how to write the things in there to get the answer you want. Uh, and it's a science. I try to explain that to students. So if, you know, if you're a member of the state legislature, are you going to spend a lot of time sitting there trying to figure out how to get it to write a bill you want it to look like? Or are you just going to ask a lobbyist? The student way of doing it is, why don't you just look, look it up on Google just as fast? Uh, the only difference is it doesn't write it for you. You have to take the stuff you find on Google and put it in like sentence form. You can't say, oh, Dr. Roush, this is Google pay, you know, Google search, blah, 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 Google search, blah, 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 type of thing. So, uh, there's actually a prompt engineering guide. So if you want to learn how to do prompt engineering, just go to, <laughs> go to Google <laughs> and type in prompt engineering guide. Uh, and the guys who wrote that are the people who wrote that. First of all, the guide is copyright 2023, so it's not going to show up in ChatGTP, uh, but uh, or at least the, 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 the cheap version. And so, uh, so now, uh, one of the things I've been discussing with my, my, uh, my wife, who's a librarian uh, over in Cornet, is uh, so if I find this great document on how the uh, Portuguese parliament works, can I feed that through ChatGTP and have it translated back to English? And so my wife right now is cranking through what would be the copyright violations that I would violate there, and would I ever be allowed to visit Portugal? <laughs> I, my dad loves Lisbon. I, I have no idea why, but uh, my, my dad doesn't even speak Spanish, much less Portuguese. So. Like a good student, since Dr. Anwar only gave this to me uh, two days ago, uh, I typed his questions in to chat GTP, and I got some answers. We'll look at those in a minute. Uh, but one of the interesting things is I just had it search for ethics, AI, and political campaigns. Is it ethical to use AI in your political campaign? Now, there are different, uh, different things. I hate switching back and forth here, but I'm going to do it anyway. Whoops, wrong way. Uh, chat GTP. So I, uh, I also got an itinerary if you want to visit Liechtenstein. Uh, there's my homily for next week. Here it is. Uh, <laughs> did I did I have ChatGTP write my homily for church? Probably. Uh, so I found out that uh, AI is a growing and significant role in the field of political science. Doesn't it make you want to stand up and put your hand over your heart when you read that? You know, it's written in such dramatic. Uh, so data analysis and prediction. Cool. Now I don't have to teach my class how to use R anymore. Uh, because they're ready to strangle me anyway uh, on R. R is a programming language. Uh, we use SPSS. I usually use SPSS, but I decided this year, since R is free, that it would be beneficial to the students to use free stuff. I'm learning otherwise. Uh, but it does data analysis and prediction. So I'm trying to figure out, if I plug in that spreadsheet that I created on Oklahoma, will it give me the answer? What caused state question 777 to lose? I didn't have a chance to try this morning because I'm still putting data in the spreadsheet. But uh, Social media analysis, that's something I've been trying to look at too. Uh, is, for example, Twitter unfair to female candidates? That's always been sort of an interesting thing to look at is Facebook. Facebook. So the things you find on Facebook about female candidates, is that much more unfair than it is uh, male candidates? That'd be sort of interesting to look at. Policy analysis, campaign strategy. Uh, when I uh, graduated from, when I finished my master's at OU, my dad actually gave me his notebook of how to run a campaign. Now, there are two things I learned from that. One is his handwriting is worse than mine. So I had to sit there and translate it into regular Roush English. And so, uh, but what's interesting about that is, uh, it really all it is is talk to people. Uh, when my dad would run for office, that's how he would you know, campaign. He would talk to people. Uh, Probably the biggest office he ever ran for was the Pennsylvania House, uh, House of Representatives. And he was so good at it, he ran four times and still lost all four times. Uh, 
But then I decided I want to be a political science major. That's what encouraged me. Uh, largely because my dad would dump me off at the areas that were strongly in favor of his opponent. And so they'd throw bricks and stuff at me. And I always thought of politics as something you have to learn how to duck and run and stuff. But, uh, governance and decision making, public opinion polling. You can actually have AI do your public opinion polling for you. I usually get students and I pay them poorly uh, to call 300 people. Uh, doesn't that sound enticing? Hey, I want to go sign up for that. <laughs> uh, and you always call them right about when they're making dinner. That's the best time to call someone for a political public opinion poll. Uh, that's when everybody calls me. And all this poll only takes 15 minutes. When you're calling me, though, it usually takes about an hour and a half. Because first of all, I want them to repeat the question a couple of times because as they're talking, I'm writing it down. Because uh, that might be a good question to use later. And I can do that without chat GDP. Network analysis. So these are the things that it found for me. But how about, uh, I also had a student who was, had a problem with his R program. Why are the file too large? I don't know why I plugged that in there. I should probably delete that one. What is the role of artificial intelligence in Congress? So I thought specific. I, I study Congress. That's my big deal. Uh, and so it does the same things. Policy analysis, uh, legislative research. So is it going to get rid of all those staffers who now do that? Well, I think about the typical member of Congress has to have someone in his or her staff that can speak typical member of Congress. And so they'll take what they find through chat GTP and translate it into member of Congress speak. So you still have to have someone. That's what I saw the other day on, it was in between all the fentanyl ads, uh, was a new story or something on, uh, uh, you're not going to be replaced by AI, you're going to be replaced by someone who knows how to use AI. So. Uh, I was going to start, and I thought about this coming up the steps, that I'm actually a tortured soul. I like learning lots of new stuff. I like learning, you know, knowing how to do things that everybody else knows how to do. But I'm also probably the most lazy person you've ever met. Uh, I hate working. So I became a professor. Uh, <laughs> and political science, when you're talking about not working. Uh, but that's the, that's the interesting thing. Uh, legislative research. Uh, I did that the other day. What did I, where did I do that? Uh, talked about data analysis, Texas Constitution, partisan realignment. That was kind of interesting. Uh, oh, I've been trying to research this guy named Fletcher Sims, trying to see who's in there. Uh, but that's not the good one. The good one was yesterday afternoon, I decided to, I do research on term limits, as I already pointed out. This is one of the things I always think is interesting. So uh, I ask it something about term limits, and then I always ask it for its sources. Uh, Bard's a little bit more clever about how it presents it. ChatGTP just says, I don't know, go look here. I'm like, well, you're making me work. I thought this was supposed to be a shortcut. Uh, but the nice thing is, you know, the Heritage Foundation term limits, the only way to clean up Congress, not a terribly good book. Uh, US term limits, the K Street, uh, I know all those guys on K Street. Uh, NORC surveys and stuff. And then, of course, I, uh, somewhere on here, Bard was my favorite yesterday. Why was Bard my favorite? I was looking for local governments, uh, and I asked it something about what do I teach, and it told me. But where did it tell me that? Oh, here it is. What does Dr. Dave Roush teach? So I teach courses primarily in the area of American politics, political institutions, and religion and politics. Very good. Uh, because it took it from my biography that's on the university website. So I knew where that was coming from. The thing that got me and actually had me tear up a little bit was that Dr. Roush is a highly respected professor and his courses are known for being challenging and engaging. <laughs> you haven't read my evaluations. Uh, he is passionate about teaching his students about American government and politics and is committed to helping them develop their critical thinking and analytical skills. I had to get out of Kleenex. Uh, I never sounded so good. But it will not tell me where it found it. <laughs> I'm kind of curious who else said that. Uh, I was talking to uh, the WT class folks, and they were thinking, see, notice I put that as a question. What is the source of this? Dr. Rachel highly respected was it. Uh, I apologize for my previous response. It's very polite. Uh, I do not have any reliable support sources to support the claim that Dr. Rauch is a highly respected, uh, because there probably aren't any. But uh, I have a feeling I gave a presentation or something at a, like the XL one time, or I spoke to the Lions Club or something, and someone may have written it down and put it in a newspaper or something. 
Uh, I don't think it's on the back of one of the books that I, I have a, a chapter in. But, uh, and then just for fun, I decided to ask, uh, as Dr. Anwar pointed out, what, uh, what is political science? Since most people don't know, we actually have a whole class on that, Introduction to Political Science. Uh, so I'm not getting the two sign yet, so apparently I must be rolling on. Oh, I got the two sign. <laughs> don't ask for it. Uh, so we're just going to quickly then go through all the rest of my 500 slides here. Uh, there's an author in the Time Magazine who pointed out that contemporary AI systems are now becoming human competitive of general tasks. Should we let machines flood our information channels with propaganda and untruth? This is one of those places where you want to sit down, cross your legs, and go, what is truth? Hmm. Uh, and so I'm going to see if I can close with this. I don't know. Uh, when I was a... That's nice to know. Uh, is that, I'm actually on YouTube? No? Oh, it does say browse YouTube. It's going to bring up all sorts of weird stuff, so I apologize for that. Weird science. Science. So weird science. Uh, you might be familiar with this movie. It's the classic Val Kilmer production where he's like a very... Thriven has helped me to develop the tools that I need. I'm getting kind of tired of the Thriven ad, too. There we go. Typical college classroom. Student anxiously writing stuff down. Oh, look, their tape recorder is replacing them. So not only is the class tape recording everything, the lecture is actually coming in on a tape recording. So is this the future with, uh, or is it the future of political science? When I go to a political science meeting, am I just going to see uh, other people with tape recorders uh, presenting their stuff? No. Is there, a future, is there a future for political science, I guess, would probably be the deeper question. I don't know. I certainly hope so, at least another 20 years of future. Uh, after that, it's, it's a, everyone's ball game. But, so thank you very much.